So in this video, I'm going to explore the topic of can you improve your photography using autofocus lenses. Like M shooters, you may want to sit this one out unless you're misfocusing your images or you're missing key moments, in which case, probably like me, you'll probably benefit. So stay tuned. Hi guys, Matt here from MrLarker.com. So yes, after getting the autofocus like a Q camera, I've kind of been a bit spoilt and it's opened my eyes to the opportunities and benefits that autofocus can give. In this video, I'm going to talk about the potential benefits of using an autofocus lens on your Leica camera or any camera and the five fast 50mm lens options on say a Leica SL. If you don't know anything about the Leica Q, this offers you both manual focus and autofocus and it has pretty much transformed my wedding photography but also rolled over into my model photography. Normally for my model shoots, I tend to prefer 50mm lenses. And so for the recent weekend's workshops that I've just come back from, I wanted to limit myself to less cameras. So I left the Leica Q behind and took only the Leica SL with a, a range of various lenses. The biggest thing that struck me was after having used the Leica Q quite a lot recently on both model shoots and wedding photography, I quite like autofocus. <laughs> If you've not seen my Patreon videos, I shoot one to one with a model, which means I don't have hair assistants or stylists or photography assistants helping with lighting or anything like that. I'm like a one man operation and I find that works better for myself because I can build a better rapport with the model much quicker. And so I can turn the round from being a stranger to a making pretty decent pictures within a span of usually two hours. So what I found was when working at the weekend, because I got used to shooting really quickly with the Leica Q camera, I've gone from doing very kind of posed sterile photos to almost enjoying the moment photos. Wedding photography, this is obviously key because for weddings, pretty much nothing's staged. Happen, you can scooch and take a shot without, without planning or having to manually focus. That's now impacting my model photography. So as I say, I've started to shoot quicker with my model photography where Sometimes I quite enjoy the moments between the poses. So they might just do something and I think looks good. So I'll try and capture it before they flick their hair or doing whatever they're doing. And so having a camera which works really quickly is important because I can capture those natural moments where suddenly the hair blows across the face and you get a really amazing smile just before it happens. And you get the frame with the mouth smile with the hair. And then like one second later, by the time you try to manually focus, the hairs across the whole face and you've missed your shot. That was the first reason which made me think maybe I need autofocus. And then the second reason I needed, I found, I thought I may benefit from autofocus is on the third day was just model shoots. So just me and the model. And so there's me in the sunshine backlighting the model and then filling with the reflector. And normally what I do is put the reflector between me and the model and then I can then be hands free. So I can have the camera in one hand, manual focus with the other hand. The problem was it was so windy. I was holding the reflector in one hand and then using the manual focus lens camera in the other hand. Two ways you can do that is you can pre-focus. So you set your lens to one meter and then rock your body in and out of focus until you hit focus and then take your shots. That's great unless something happens quickly and then you, you haven't got a hand on the lens to turn it to critically focus. So I was missing some moment shots where the hair was blowing and it's cool things are happening because I didn't have a hand on the lens where if you had autofocus, you could obviously half press and keep critically focusing just a half press with one hand. That's a big, a biggie. <laughs> and then by being able to use your camera one handed, you can flip your other hand in either a wedding scenario or a model scenario to either use a reflector to handhold a flash. Sometimes I walk around with a flash in one hand and then a trigger on the top of the camera. And then I can obviously angle the light wherever I want. Uh, it's not limited to being stuck on top of the camera. And so all this boils down to I could probably benefit from using an autofocus lens on my camera. And if you're miss focusing any of your shots, either from bad eyesight, you could benefit from autofocus. Or if you're too slow manually focusing on whatever you are photographing, maybe you do something that moves. If you're doing still life, this video probably doesn't relate to you. But generally speaking, autofocus can help capture those fast moments. This is particularly true when you're using very fast aperture lenses. So I tend to shoot 51.4, for example. So my question is, do you guys feel similar? Have you had similar experiences with your photography? If you shoot models or weddings or anything fast moving with a fast aperture lens, there's a very high probability that you'll benefit from an autofocus lens. And so this brings me on to the problem. 
the problem we have is if you're a Leica shooter, if we only look at full frame and interchangeable lenses, you've only got the SL, SL2, SL2S. These are L mount cameras for those of you not aware. So that shares the same app with some Sigma bodies and like my Panasonic Lumix S5. Have you looked at the lenses available for these systems? I've gone through and I've done a, a quick tally up on, on Google. I've got my pen and paper out. I like doing my list. So I did a quick list. We have five fast fifties available in L mount and they're all non-ideal. What do I mean by that? So let's step back a bit. If any of you were not born into Leica and so you shot with a cheaper brand before shooting with Leica, you may have used say Canon or Nikon DSLRs in the past. You would have had 50mm lenses a little bit like this, kind of small nifty 50s they used to call them, nice small 51.4 autofocus lens. It didn't add much size to your camera and it just did an amazing job. That's how it used to be. Sadly, Leica don't make nifty 50s and it seems out of fashion for L mount cameras to have a small fast 51.4 lens. So firstly, Leica, if you're watching, please make us a sensibly sized autofocus 51.4 or 51.8 lens. But then what we're limited to is big lenses. These are the size of what we're going to be looking at or talking about compared to how big they should be if they're based on the older designs of the Nikons and the Canons. Yes, I know it's a completely different lens design and blah, blah, blah. But there must be a way to make a smaller version than these massive lenses for people that want a small system. Bear in mind that Leica were famous for being a small compact camera. So if you go back to cameras like the Leica 3 cameras, the Barnax that I use, come on Leica, if you stick into your roots, make us a small system. <laughs> That partly brings me on to a video that I was going to do in the future. Why don't they make us a 50mm Lucky Q? Because if you think how big a Lucky Q is, the lens is, let's say, that big. And that is autofocus. So if they made a 50mm autofocus Lucky Q, it's going to have a small lens. It's going to be autofocus. It's going to be the amazingness of what the Lucky Q gives us at the moment, just with a 50mm focal length. Point number one. Point number two, if we're stuck with big, fat 50mm L mount lenses, what are our options? They're limited, <laughs> but we'll go through them anyway. As this is a mostly Leica channel, we'll talk Leica first. So obviously first you've got the Leica Simulux SL 51.4. That lens comes in at a cool 5,000 pounds. That lens weighs over one kilo and it's probably about that long compared to that. Option number two, you've got the Leica Summicron 50mm F2 Apo. I have done a full review on this lens. The lens does take nice photos, but again, it's oversized. It's probably, let's just say, that big, just for argument's sake. Nice lens, too big, and for my budget, too expensive. Uh, if you buy it new, £4,000. So what's that? £5,000-ish. So those are the two luck options. You've then got Lumix. Lumix to a Lumix S Pro 51.4. That lens, again, weighs one kilo, and it's even bigger than the Summerlux. Way too big. Lumix also do a budget version, the Lumix Pro 50 1.8 L mount lens. This lens interests me, <laughs> I, won't, I won't lie. I mean, I discovered it this morning looking on Google. This lens costs £429 and only weighs 300 grams. So that's, that's competitive. That's as light as some of the M mount lenses and it's shorter. And so that's like, hmm, maybe I'd like to test that lens. If you've used any of these lenses, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Tell me what lens you're using and is it any good from the ones I'm mentioning or if you're using anything similar. And then next, number five, we have the Sigma Art 50 1.4, which again, I've done a full review of. That lens is stupidly big and it weighs 815 grams. So it's plasticky, but it's still too big. Uh, yes, it can take very nice photos. It is very sharp. Uh, I got really nice results and you can get nice bokeh, shallow depths of field. Uh, see that review if you want to see that. But again, it's too big. Cost-wise, £649, so not ridiculously expensive, especially compared to like Those are all the fast 50s I'm aware of for L-mount, which means you can use it on Leica SL cameras. If I've forgotten any, please let me know below. The only other two options I could think of, which is close to 50, is you could use the Sigma DGDN 65 f2, which again interests me because that's a smaller lens. You could use the... Sigma 45 f2.8 that interests me on the size because it's really small but it's too slow to get the shallow depth of field fast aperture look which I'm trying to get for my portrait so 
that's probably a no-go. The problem I then have is all these lenses are modern, spherical, super duper, sharp, clinical, put in any words that you want to, they're modern lenses. Does that mean I'm going to lose my look that I get from my vintage manual focus lenses that I use currently on my like SL camera via various adapters? Probably yes. And so then I'd have to think about how I could potentially soften up the modern lenses to get the look of the older lenses. So that might mean using softening filters. It might mean using various kind of lens hacks if I want to get some certain look. I guess I'm asking you guys, what do you recommend? I need a fast 50 autofocus lens for like a SL camera, which is small enough and affordable. If Leica don't make us a 50 mil version of the Leica Q, I'm gonna to have to look at big fat lenses and so it's trying to work out which is the best of the big fat lenses. I know the Leica SL lenses are fantastic, but they're out of my budget. My plan is to keep using manual focus lenses, but then always carry an autofocus lens because if you've seen these videos before, some models will be very slow and they'll just hold a pose forever. And then other models is like and so some of the girls i'm starting to work with now are really fast paced models because they were they're used to being shot for billboards and things like that and it's the moments between the moments which are the killer shot i would think all fashion photographers are going to be shooting autofocus many many questions <laughs> feel free to write all your thoughts below because yeah i think it's an interesting one i'm trying to remove the barrier between me and the final photo and so if that means owning an autofocus lens then so be it. I can still use vintage lenses and film cameras and everything else when I'm using working with slower models. As I say, each model is different. If you would love the ability to make a complete stranger feel special just by taking a few photos, you'd probably think appreciate my Patreon. If I can do it, you can definitely do it. If you enjoyed this video, please smash the like button. As always, a massive thanks to my patrons. And if you're interested in the difference between the optical performance of a autofocus like a SL, 50 f2 apo lens versus the voigtlander manual focus 50 f2 apo lens watch this video next